Hi there. We are in day 202 of our Through the Bible in one year. We are finishing the last seven chapters of the book of Hosea today. Hosea, as we studied yesterday, was a minor prophet from Israel. And he had nothing good to say. Okay. Well, let's finish up his, his prophets. And I remember Israel had forgotten about God and they appointed their own rules and their own kings and they made idols and they were sacrificing their children to gods, killing their own children. And they were prostituting themselves and everybody else and it was just a, and they had made idols out of wood and gold and silver and it was just a horrible situation. But let's see what else he's he's going to do, right? <laughs> hey. Israel's false hopes. Put the horn to your mouth. One like an eagle comes against the house of the Lord because they transgressed my covenant and rebelled against my law. Israel cries out to me, My God, we know you. Israel has rejected what is good. An enemy will pursue him. There you go. They have installed kings, but not through me. They have appointed leaders, without, but without my approval. They make their silver and gold into idols for themselves, for their own destruction. Your calf idol is rejected, Samaria. My anger burns against them. How long will they be incapable of innocence? For this thing is, for this thing is from Israel, a craftsman made, and it is not God. The calf of Samaria will be smashed to bits. It's always a calf, huh? Yeah, amazing. Indeed, they sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. There is no standing grain. What sprouts fails? What sprouts fails to yield labor, to yield flower labor. Even if they did, foreigners would swallow it up. Israel is swallowed up. Now they are among the nations like discarded pottery, for they have gone up to Assyria like a wild donkey going off on its own. Ephraim is paid for love. Even though they hire lovers among the nations, I will now round them up, and they will begin to decrease in number under the burden of the king and leaders. When Ephraim multiplied his altars for sin, they became his altars for sinning. Though I were to write, though I were to write out for him ten thousand points of my instruction, they would be regarded as something strange. Though they offer sacrificial gifts and eat the flesh. The Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their guilt and punish their sins. They will return to Egypt, right? Back into slavery, in other words. Israel has forgotten his maker and built palaces. Judah has also multiplied fortified cities. I will send a fire on their cities and it will consume their citadels. Not happy, right? <clears throat> the coming exile. Chapter 9. Israel, do not rejoice jubilantly as the nations do, for you have acted promiscuously, leaving your God. You have loved the wages of a prostitute on every grain threshing floor. Threshing floor and wine fat will not sustain them, and the new wine will fail them. They will not stay in the land of the Lord. Instead, Ephraim will return to Egypt, and they will eat unclean food in Assyria. They will not pour out their wine offerings to the Lord, and their sacrifices will not please him. Their food will be like the bread of mourners. All who eat it become defiled, for their bread will be for their appetites alone. And it will not enter the house of the Lord. What will you do on a festival day, on the day of the Lord's feast? <clears throat> for even if they flee from devastation, Egypt will gather them, and Memphis will bury them. Thistles will take possession of their precious silver. Thorns will invade their tents. The days of punishment have come. The days of retribution have come. Let Israel recognize it. The prophet is a fool, and the, in, and the inspired man is insane. Because of the magnitude of your guilt and hostility, Ephraim's watchman is with my God. The prophet encounters a fowler's snare on all his ways. Hostility is in the house of his God. They have deeply corrupted themselves. As in the days of Gibeah, he will remember their guilt. He will punish their sins. Wow. Bereaved of offspring. I discovered Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers. 
like the first fruit of the fig tree in its first season. But they went, but they went to Baal Peor, consecrated themselves to shame, and became detestable, like the thing they loved. Ephraim's glory will fly away like a bird. No birth, no gestation, no conception. Even if they raise children, I will bereave them of each one. Yes, woe to them when I depart from them. I have seen, I have seen Ephraim like Tyre planted in a meadow. So Ephraim will bring out his children to the executioner. Give them, Lord, what should you give? Give them a womb that miscarries and breasts that are dry. Wow. All, all their evil appears at Gilgal, for, for there I came to hate them. I will drive them from my house because of their evil, wicked actions. I will no longer love them. All their leaders are rebellious. Ephraim is struck down. Their roots are withered. They cannot bear fruit. Even if they bear children, I will kill the precious offspring of their wombs. My God will reject them because they have not listened to him. They will become wanderers among the nations. And they were for a long time, right? The vine and the calf. Israel is a lush vine. It yields fruit for itself. The more, the more his fruit increased, the more he increased the altars. The better his land produced, the better they made the sacred pillars. Their hearts are devious. Now they must bear the guilt. The Lord will work down their altars and demolish their sacred pillars. In fact, they are now saying, We have no king, for we do not fear the Lord. Who can, who can a king, what can a king do for us? They speak mere words, taking false oaths while making covenants. So lawsuits break out like poisonous weeds in the furrows of a field. The residents of Samaria will have anxiety over the, over the calf of Beth Amon. Indeed, its idolatrous priests rejoiced over it. The people will moan over it, over its glory. It will certainly depart from them. The calf itself will be taken to Assyria as an offspring to the great king. Ephraim will experience shame. Israel will be ashamed of its counsel. Samaria's king will disappear like foam on the surface of the water. The high places of Aben, the sin of Israel, will be destroyed. Thorns and thistles will grow over their altars. They will say to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. Israel's defeat because of sin. Israel, you have sinned since the days of Gibeah. They have, they have taken their stand there. Will, will not war against the unjust overtake them at Gibeah? I will discipline them at my discretion. Nations will be gathered against them to put them in bondage for their two crimes. Ephraim is a well-trained calf that loves to thresh. But I will place a yoke on, on her fine neck. I will harness Ephraim. Judah will plow. Jacob will do the final plowing. So sow righteousness for yourselves and reap faithful love. Break up your unplowed ground. It is time to seek the Lord until he comes and sends righteousness on you like the rain. You have, you have plowed wickedness and reaped injustice. You have eaten the fruit of lies because... You have trusted in your own way and in your large number of soldiers. The roar of battle will rise against your people and all your fortifications will be demolished in a day of war. Like Shaman's destruction of Beth Arbel, mothers will be dashed to pieces along with their children. So it will be done to you, Bethel, because of your extreme evil. At dawn, the king of Israel will be totally destroyed. Wow. The Lord's love for Israel. <clears throat> When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. The more, the more they called them, the more they departed from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and burning offerings to idols. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them in my arms, but they never knew that I healed them. I led them with human cords with ropes of love. To, the, to them, I was like one who eases the yoke from their jaws. I bent down to give them food. Israel will not return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria will be his king. Because they refuse to repent, a sword will whirl through the cities, and it will destroy and devour the bars of its gates because of their schemes. My people are bent on turning from me. They call to him on high. He will not exalt them at all. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I surrender you, Israel? How can I make you Admah? How can I treat you like Zeb Zeboim? Zeboim? I have, had a, I have had a change of heart. My compassion is stirred. I will not vent the fury of my anger. I will not vent the fury of my anger. I will not turn back to destroy Ephraim. For I am God and not man, the Holy One among you. I will not come in rage. 
They will follow the Lord. He will roar like a lion. When he roars, his children will come trembling from the west. That's us, right? From the west? They will be roused like birds from Egypt and the doves from the land of Assyria. Then I will settle them in their homes. This is the Lord's declaration. I like that. His children will come trembling from the west. Hmm. Ephraim surrounds me with lies. The house of Israel with deceit. Judah still wanders, wanders with God and is faithful to the holy ones. Chapter 12. Ephraim chases the wind and pursues the east wind. He continually multiplies lies and violence. He makes a covenant with Caesarea, and olive oil is carried to Egypt. The Lord is also the Lord also has a dispute with Judah. He is about to punish Jacob according to his ways. He will repay him based on his actions. In the womb he grasps his mother's heel. And as an adult, he wrestled with God. Jacob struggled with the angel and prevailed. He wept and sought his favor. He found him at Bethel, and there he spoke with him. Yahweh is the God of hosts. Yahweh is his name. Yahweh. But you must return to your God. Maintain love and justice and always put hope in your hope in God. A merchant loves to extort with dishonest scales in his hands. But Ephraim says, how rich I have become. I made it all myself. In all my earnings, no one can find any crime in me that I can be punished for. All right. Judgment. I have been Yahweh your God ever since the land of Egypt. I will make you live in tents again, as in the festival days. I spoke through the prophets and granted and granted many visions. I gave parables through the prophets. Since Gilead is full of evil, they will certainly come to nothing. The sacrificed bulls of Gilgal, even their altars will be like heaps of rocks on the furrows of a field. Father in further indictment of Jacob's heirs. Right? Jacob fled to the land of Aram. Israel worked to earn a wife. He tended flocks for a wife. The Lord brought Israel from Egypt by a prophet, and Israel was tended by a prophet. Ephraim has provoked bitter anger, so his Lord will leave his blood guilt on him and repay him for his contempt. Wow. 13. When Ephraim spoke, there was trembling. He was exalted in Israel, but he incurred guilt through the Baal and died. Now they continue to sin and make themselves a cast image. I just skillfully made from their silver, all of them the work of craftsmen. People say about them, let the men who sacrifice kiss the calves, therefore they will be like the morning mist, like the early dew that vanishes, like chaff blown from the threshing floor, or like smoke from a window. Death and destruction. I have been Yahweh your God ever since the land of Egypt. You know no God but me, and no Savior exists besides me. I knew you in the wilderness, in the land, in the land of drought. When they had pa when they had pasture, they came be became satisfied. They were satisfied, and their hearts became proud. Therefore, they forgot me. So I will be like a lion to them. I will lurk like a leopard on the path. I will attack them like a bear robbed of her cubs, and tear open the rib cage over their hearts. Wow! <laughs> I will devour them like a lioness like a wild beast that would rip them open. I will destroy you, Israel. You have no help but me. Where now is your king, that he may save you in all your cities? And the rulers you demanded, saying, Give me a king and leaders. I gave you a king in my anger, and take away a king in my wrath. Ephraim's guilt is preserved. His sin is stored up. Labor pains come on him. He is not a wise son. When the time comes, he will not be born. I will ransom them from the power of Sheol. I will redeem them from death. Death, where are your barbs? Sheol, where is your sting? Compassion is hidden from my eyes. They used to use this a lot. Back in the colonial days, they used this verse a lot. All right. I will redeem them from death. Death, where is your barbs? Hell, where is your sting? The coming judgment. Although he flourishes among his brothers, an east, an east wind will come, a wind from the Lord rising up from the desert. His water source will fail, and his spring will run dry. The wind will plunder the treasury over of every precious item. Samaria will bear her guilt because she has rebelled against her God. They will fall by the sword. Their little ones will be dashed to pieces, and their pregnant women ripped open. Wow. He means business. Huh? Okay, chapter 14. 
a plea to repent. Israel, return to Yahweh your God, for you have stumbled up in your sin. Take words of repentance with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, forgive all our sin and accept what is good so that we may repay you with praise from our lips. Assyria will not save us, we will not ride on horses, and we will no longer proclaim our gods to the work of our hands. For the Father thus receives compassion in you. A promise of restoration. I will heal their apostasy, I will freely love them, for my anger will have turned from him. I will be like the dew to Israel. He will blossom like the lily and take root like the cedars of Lebanon. His new branches will spread and his splendor will be like the olive tree, his fragrance like the forest of Lebanon. The people will return and live beneath his, sh beneath his shade. They will grow again and blossom like the vine. His renown will be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, why should I have anything more to do with idols? It is I who answer and watch over them. I am like the flourishing pine tree. Your fruit comes from me. Let whoever is wise understand these things. And whoever is insightful, recognize him, for the ways of the Lord are right, and the righteous walk within them, but the rebellious stumble in them. There you go. That was very interesting, huh? That was the book of Hosea in its entirety. And tomorrow we're back in Isaiah, okay? the main prophet. Right? So, there you have it. That was the entire book of Hosea. Seven chapters yesterday, seven chapters today. Quite the prophet. Hmm? Quite the prophet. Had a lot of things to say. The nation of Israel and Judah. Remember the 12 tribes had been separated by God because he got mad at them before and said, I will split your kingdom apart and you'll fight amongst each other. And they did that for hundreds of years, many generations. And they had prophets writing, you know, you guys, you're just going down the wrong path. And, you know, they were really going down the wrong path and Hosea was writing about them. So, but that was Hosea. Tomorrow we're back into Isaiah for day 203. Give us a like if you think about it. Catch up on any you, you may have missed. All They're all recorded down there on both YouTube and Rumble. So, but till tomorrow, we'll keep going. See you then.